Welcome to Nimbus Guide. Step 1. We need to prepare an account that will be used for tests. For that, open your management interface, select the account that will be used for tests, and enable Apps Nimbus service right here. Click OK to save the changes and open Nimbus dot vlon dot com now we need to log in using your top account please note I'm using my top account not the account that we have just prepared now we can see the page where you need to activate a depot for the account that we have just prepared for tests click here to do it a depot is a, an element of the system that contains stops, routes, timetables, and other elements used by the application. Creator of the account has full rights for the depot. If you need to grant access rights to someone else, just click on the account name and enable the rights for, for other accounts. Click Save to save the changes. And please also don't forget to enable Apps Nimbus service for the accounts you grant access rights to. On Depot Settings tab right here, please also remember to adjust time zone settings. Now you can log in using the account that we have just prepared. The first page you are going to see is stops. On this page you can create stops for public transport that will be later used in routes. To create a stop, right click on the map and select the form. It can be a polygon or a circle. Let us select polygon, add the shape we want. Specify the name of the stop here, add some description, which can be used to distinguish the stops with the same name, and select transport type here, bus, trolley bus, tram or route taxi. Click save to add this stop to the map. Now let us select a circle and do the same. You can adjust its radius. Add a description. And select transport type here. Click save to add this top to the map. We also have a dress feature that allows you to quickly move to the area on the map. Let us enter an address and create a stop nearby. As soon as you have saved these stops, you can now see them on the list to the left, where you can edit them or delete them. Using the menu on the left, you can also import your stops from KML or KMZ files. Such files can be created from Geofences in VLO. To import them, press this button here and select a file. Disable some checkboxes if you only want particular stops to be added to the map. Please also specify type of transport here. As soon as you have clicked import button, stops have appeared on the list to the left, 
and you can also see them on the map. You can filter them by transport type if you select the type you need in the upper panel here. We can view only bus stops, trolley bus, tram and route taxi stops. After creating stops, we can proceed to creating routes. Click Routes menu and press Create Route button. Select the stops that will be used in route by clicking here. Next, arrange the stops in the right order by dragging them in the list. This is the order in which they must be visited. Click Continue to proceed. You can now see the route and waypoints which can be changed if route was built using wrong routes. In the menu on the left, uh, you can change the order by dragging stops in the list, add stops to the route, delete them, or replace them by clicking ellipsis icon here. As you can see, stops are displayed on the map, so this way of organizing stops is more user-friendly and vivid. On the upper panel, you also need to specify route number and transport type. Additionally, you can add a description in this field. This can be used to distinguish between the initial route and return route. Click Save to add this route. The next step is to create schedule. For that we go to schedule step here and press create first schedule button. Here we need to specify time of visit uh, for each stop. Click Save once you've done this. Now let us proceed to adding another schedule by clicking the button over here. If you select a copy from the drop down list option, this schedule over here will be used as a template. So we only need to specify the beginning time and click Apply. As you can see, time interval between the stops is the same because we used this previous schedule as a template. Click Save once again and let us add more schedules. Click Save. On Schedule tabs you can also assign units that should be performing these rights. It can also be done later. But assigning units to schedules on this stage can save you some time. As soon as schedules have been created, we click Routes tab once again and activate the route so that it can be used. Once you have activated a route over here and 
if you have schedules created for this route, all upcoming rides will be scheduled automatically. Now let's switch to Rides tab, where you will be able to see them. By default, you can see the list of remaining rides for today, but it can be easily changed if you select another date in the menu here. As you can see, this list has assigned and unassigned rights. You can click this button here to filter them and fix it. The same is true for routes. This button here shows how many units are used on this route. You can also delete rights if something has changed and right does need to be taken. For this click here and you can also restore it. We're using our demo account to show how it would look in real life. Stop tab looks like this. As you can see, stops are displayed in groups. But once you zoom in, you'll be able to see them individually. Routes tab looks like this. As you can see, there are some routes here. Some of them are active like these ones, and there is also an inactive one. Rights for inactive routes are not created at all. Now, you might be interested, what are the use cases of inactive routes? For example, you have created a route, but not yet finished it. It can be saved as inactive, and later on you can continue adding stops and schedules to it. Or, for example, some routes are seasonal and you have disabled one, but you still need to be used later. You can also filter routes by transport type and search them by name, number or description. Let's switch to rights. As you can see, full list of current and upcoming rights is available here. Red asterisk over here shows overlapping rights. For example, one bus is assigned to two rights nearly at the same time, and asterisk shows us that a bus can carry out two rights at the same time. You can also view all routes for the desired unit. Switch to Units route view is over here. It allows you to track overlapping rights in a more easy way. Blue frame here indicates rights already in process. Now let us switch to online tab where you can track units being on route right away. You can see the routes and write progress. Stops are marked as dots and you can see its name in the tooltip. Units are displayed as icons and the name can be also found in the tooltip. You can also see the timing of the right here. It shows whether the unit is late or early. Two and more units are displayed as a single group. If you click on a root name, you will be able to see a map displaying current unit location. which is a more convenient way to track how your public transport follows the route. Red triangle over here displays some troubles with the unit. For example, an assigned unit or unit that is not on route or it doesn't send data and the unit's location is unknown. Tooltip of the red triangle displays the information about troubled unit. Nimbus also allows you to get various notifications like stop skipping, being extremely late or early, route deviations and start of the ride. All of them can be displayed here. Notifications can be configured in settings over here. 
Online tab is affected by hurry or delay options. You will only see the information about a delay if it's larger than the value specified in these fields. When a unit is late, tag under it will turn red. When a unit is early, tag will turn yellow. Reports tab allows you to view basic reports for finished rights. You can choose between root rights and unit rights types over here. The information in the report shows average hurry up or delay time, stops visited and whether the ride was completed or not. Reports can also be exported as Excel file. That's it. Thanks for watching.